Welcome to the Coates vs Nishim Mini Cooper Cup here with Next Gen Racing for not just round 9 but round 10 of the championship. What is fantastic about tonight is that we have three races on hand. That's why I said round 9 and 10. You can see the drivers going round Austria short at this current moment in time. That's where round 9 will take place. The usual two races. However, round 10 is something a little bit different. Round 9 will see a feature of 5 minute qualifying very shortly, followed by two 15 minute races. And then round 10, round Brands Hatch when we go to it later on, will be a half an hour race which will have 4 times tyre wear which will make it very interesting in terms of strategy for the drivers. I'm delighted to say though, before I go into anything else and before we start qualifying, Jordan is back for the season finale as it turns out. Yeah, good evening. A little bit earlier than expected, but uh, what's not to love about more racing on an evening? I know. It's fair Absolutely to say. Brilliant. And we've got a nice, nice grid of cars as well for tonight. Um, we, and we have. I was going to say, round nine, round Red Bull Ring short. It's got, I think it's going to be interesting because there's only going to be really two real overtaking spots, which is into turn one and into the Panorama corner at uh, Rind. Because of that slipstream, I think it's going to be quite hard everywhere else unless you get a really good run either up into the corner or out of it. Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to, to see how the drivers get on around here. But now that Philo has joined, we will jump into settings. I've just changed that and updated it so we can go to see the race. Just making sure that everything is again, like I said. Obviously earlier, 15 minutes races for tonight because we're doing three races in the space of two, sort of, in a sense. So we'll try to get through it as best we can, as quickly as we can for the drivers. Let's get things underway. And whilst I do that, I'm going to rely on Jordan's ability to load tables quickly because there's a lot of different permutations and, well, a lot of chaos. Looking forward to tonight where we will crown a champion. Yeah, a fair few permutations. Obviously, we can't really permutate in this race because it's—I think it's pretty much impossible. Um, I will quickly work it out though if I get a piece of paper because I'm a bit old school like that. Now, uh, whilst Jordan works out the the championship and how that scales, we know that there are two drivers within a realistic shot of the scores. And what I also haven't mentioned during that opening is that the final race is double points on offer obviously because it's a endurance race it'll be a little bit longer so the drivers deserve a little bit more reward although personally I'd rather give them half points just because I'm a cynic and I'm looking forward to um, you know like Jordan said I'm looking forward to Red Bull Ring short sure, I think it's the biggest opportunity like like Jordan mentioned is going to be into Rinse which is the penultimate corner um, that's going to be a good opportunity in the slipstream down into turn one. But I have seen moves into turn two where the short section connects with the, the rest of the track. Yeah, I mean, looking at the points, I know how many Les needs to score tonight to uh, to to win it. Without if Fourfish was to win every single race. Uh, and take every bonus point he can. Uh, so, effectively, for Les and Fourfish, if obviously if they win, there will be uh, there's there's no pole point for race two. So there is uh, 23 available in round nine, race one. 22 available in round nine, race two, and 46 available in round 10 making 91 points the maximum you can score uh, at the moment the gap is 31 points so uh, as long as next gen layer scores 61 points or more he will be guaranteed champion uh, as he'll be at least one point ahead of four fish um, but obviously he really only needs 60 because the amount of race wins he's taken this season but as as we all know jack We'd rather win the title on, on the amount of our points rather than a count back. Definitely. You want it on merit. You want it on the results that you've scored. And Les, we know, will want to win it on track. Absolutely. He's a fighter, as he always has been in this mini-series and throughout the, all the other leagues. 
that he's taken part in, and this would be a, you know, a first league title for Les. He's not won one before. It'd be nice to see a new champion amongst the next generation ranks. He's third at the moment after the initial runs. It's Rally Matt who's setting a stonking time in the opening lap do there. Do you want to go for three, a, the fastest we've seen. three or four lap with our current champion elect, shall we say? Well, I think it's, it's just a touch too early to call him that. There's still a, <laughs> three races to go tonight. But here we go then on board with Les as we come towards the line. And he goes purple as we come up towards turn one. Got to be careful with this corner in the mini. The car does like to understeer. So Rally Matt goes a little bit quicker. Down into third gear for turn one for Les. Clips the exit curb really nicely. Still stays in third gear. Gearing very important around this circuit as we come into turn two. As you can see... Les stays in fourth, and it's a very good reason why he does. Keeps the wheels from spinning up too much. He's still completely flat through the left hander at turn three, and then turn four, we're back on the main circuit. And like Jordan said earlier, this is going to be the big slipstream in the moment because it's flat from turn two onwards. Down up to potentially fifth gear. No, Les prefers to stay in fourth. Little bl blip on the brakes, runs over the exit curb into the final corner. It Again, keeps it in fourth. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a lap of the Red Bull ring as Les gets himself a penalty and pulls over. No. He's not going to have any more time to do a lap. No, he, that kind of ruins the, the following lap as well. He just mm. went too far on the exit of Rind, which is the penultimate corner. Um, as Philo now puts it on pole position. Really, really good lap time. Now, Philo... Philo Go on, Jordan. I was going to say, Fido's in a bit of a battle with Bruce Lee Harding and Rally Matt. 14 points separating the three drivers for third place. Um, so, obviously, every point's crucial at the moment, especially with that double double pointer of an endurance race. Mm, it is. It's going to be absolutely key. And I know Jordan will be keeping an eye on that as we go through. The timer ticking down towards 10 seconds. So this is going to be the last lap for every driver. First driver who will come to the line is Les, but we know he's uh, not going to be anywhere near his lap time. Well, yeah, Les down in third place. Not exactly where he'd want to be, but four fish down in sixth, so it's not a major disaster. Um, four fish is following Rally Matt. Rally Matt will be the first to come to the line then, and Rally Matt's got a penalty. What about four fish and Bruce? No improvement. No one really improves there. I see. Uh, is it don't know. Only car left to come across the line. Coming out of the final corner is Jazzy Just. Nice He's livery, a, I must admit. I was going to say, I was going to say, it's a nice tribute livery for tonight's racing. In that Red Bull car. He's not going any quicker. So it's Philo on pole position. Fantastic effort. Yeah, Philo. He's obviously looking, eyeing up that third place in the championship, and what better way to do it than to start on pole with one of your main rivals behind you. I see Rally Matt only just behind him. As you can see there on the front row, Philo, followed by Rally Matt, Les, Bruce, Traumatic Dave, Fourfish, Joey Dunlop, Dominator, and Jazzy Just. Those two cars in between Les and Fourfish could play a key role in this first race. As we go to the lights, we have all three red lights on. We are green for the first time tonight here at Austria. And it's a good start from Philo on that controller. You do tend to get decent starts if you're on the on the triggers as he is. A little bit a bit bunched up, but pretty much two by two. And as we go further back through the field, looks like we got away all cleanly. And we're heading up towards turn two, which is, I think, good worth. It is indeed obviously named after the manufacturing company. We've got the drivers just filtering through there at the moment. Philo leads the way. They've got a nice little gap to Bruce Lee, who's just picked up a penalty of sorts. Rally Matt will do well just to play this tactically and get along with it as Bruce Lee's being challenged by Les. Yeah, we've got two pairs coming up. So as, as we say, that slipstream. Les will complete the move on Bruce. Bruce won't fight that too much. He knows Les is a good chance for him to uh, rock up to the back of the leaders. Fourfish not made any progress from sixth place, which is not what ideal for him in this championship situation. But Rally Matt still all over the bumper of Philo. He is indeed. Rally Matt looking towards the outside line. 
not moved you really see in front wheel drive cars he's been impeded as well because of it here comes les he's gonna have the momentum but he can't cut to the inside because bruce lee's right there almost free in tandem as matt defends on the inside les goes later on the brakes trying to go around the outside tell you what we've seen this in practice between me and jordan what a move around the outside from les he takes second place keep the momentum but as we did in in practice jack that slipstream is going to be right in the favor of rally matt now as we come up indeed. towards rind for the second time top five covered by 1.2 four fish did get past traumatic dave in the background i saw that as i was watching it i'll go back and have a look at that in a minute i've replay marked it just make sure we're not going to have any action here i think i'll quickly go back and have a look at that now go on then and it's actually earlier than my replay can pick up not to worry then the eight cars line astern as we come into turn one Filo a bit wide Dave went very wide as well Filo now up to 1.7 seconds worth of penalties 2.2 it's losses that, it's not too difficult the, the fortunate thing for Filo is that it's not too difficult to drop penalties around here especially in a slipstream train but he's gonna have to time it right because he's gonna oh he's in the, the gravel trap. just a bit wide from Filo there bit of understeer and Joey Dunlop's got past from Ask Dave in the background as well a really good fight between mm. Dunlop Dave and Dominator that's three D's in a row as we go into turn well number six Dominator down maybe. the inside of Rind and for the Red Bull mobile corner can't quite complete the move but Joey Dunlop runs a bit wide that might give him a bit of a penalty yeah I think Dave gets a penalty Dunlop's got a penalty Philo's still got two seconds look at this in the front there rally Matt up on the outside again looking to try and pull that move around the outside of Les they lean on one another into the corner nothing really doing Fourth Fish can't take advantage he's very quietly moved his way up the field he's doing well so far he needs to be moving up the field for the championship but like I say Velo right on the back of this and Joey Dunlop getting involved too yeah Dunlop down the inside of Philo there I don't know whether Philo is trying to get rid of some of his penalty that he needs to do He's uh, 1.1 seconds right now, but uh, Philo seems to be struggling at the moment, just in this pack. He he is, but I think, Jordan, he'll be happy just to carry on and try and make sure he doesn't make any mistakes. I think he, when I watched him going into turn two, he was trying to clear that penalty, as is everyone else who's got penalty at the moment. They've got the inside. That's going to cause Philo a penalty, which he doesn't deserve. Yeah, Bruce Lee Honey making Fourfish's life a little bit hard at the moment, defending from him through Rind. Where Fourfish needs to get onto the back of Rally Matt as soon as possible here. Um, I, I think I'll, whilst this is going on, I'll quickly go back and show everyone what happened to uh, Philo. So, up towards Worth, he's just come in, is absolutely fine. Nothing wrong with that. Oh, I don't know whether he's just received a tiny tap there. I, mean, I need to have another look at that, Jack, because there sounded like a bit of contact. Well, let's have a look then, see if there was any. So looking back from Philo's car now. Oh, Les did look down the inside there. was a bit of contact, which obviously pushed Philo wide. I know Philo's not going to be too happy. And I'm unsure if Les was really down the inside enough to warrant that but that's not for us to decide no not at the moment bruce lee looking at the inside but brakes just backed out of that that's rally matt going front obviously tactics already coming into effect with just under 10 minutes to go of this race normally at this point you say it's halfway but it's not <laughs> we're not at the halfway point until we get seven minutes four fish though just sat behind this crew he's given a couple of bumps to bruce lee who's bumped rally matt wide just aids Les oh, though. Four fish down the away. inside of Bruce through Worth. But who's gonna get that who's Matt gonna favour with that slipstream? It looks like it's gonna be four fish, so four fish should get this done before end. He will. He's got a nice run and through into third he goes. Lovely move from four fish up to third place. Les has got about a second to the cars behind now. As it stands, Jordan, extending that gap in the championship, but it, fourth fish is not giving it up. He's all over the back of Rally Matt now, coming towards turn one. He's pulled out the slipstream. Yeah, and 
I'd like to think that Fullfish might need to start working together with these boys because Les is going to start getting away and that lead will become unassailable no matter how much slipstream you have. Bruce Lee's on the inside of Fullfish, who's on the inside of Rally Matters. They're going to turn two. Fullfish breaks later, covers that inside line. He's up to second. Gap now two seconds to Les. I've watched in practice. Fullfish has been quite quick when he's not impeded by anyone, not fighting with any other drivers. So let's see how he gets on. Still about half, the, well, just over half of this session remaining. Bruce just, will no doubt want to stay on his back and Rally Matt's falling away. Just to point out, Les has taken fastest laps, so he's got an extra bonus point for that. But now, Bruce may actually work with Four Fish. They both know that's the only way they're going to catch Les. So these two now need to knuckle down, start working together and push each other up to that leading car. Uh, but championship, live championship standings, because it's what I normally do, as Jack knows from previous series. Uh, currently, Les would be on 331 points, Four Fish on 296. So, still a large gap, and obviously Les extending that gap to 35 points currently. That is looking like a nice healthy lead. Bruce Lee's up the inside and through. I'm going to replay that because I don't actually know what fully happened there. So no, I, I didn't catch the. I didn't catch it until right at the end. Probably Matt's got the momentum on four fish, but he just slows down. It, just, it looks like Fourfish just didn't get the momentum, just looking back on my own stream. It just looked like he didn't quite get that momentum going through through turn two. See the drivers making a couple of mistakes in the minis. No one really consistent other than Mr. Consistent himself at the front. 59 flat. Most any driver. 2.8 the gap. Whoa, Bruce had a big moment through turn one and full fish even fish. wider than that. Yeah, he had a big big little snatch back as well across the circuit. No penalty for full fish on that one. Lucky for him. Philo's picked up more penalties as he's gone round. He's in a 59-7. It's a dramatic day since he's got away from his the fighting duo of Dunlop and Dominator. He's actually been not too bad. He's not too far away from Philo. He was catching that group ahead. Yeah, he, he's gradually nipping away, isn't he? And obviously, he's only got 0.8 to Philo, who only has one second to match. They both are going to get some... some it's going to be very small slipstream, but it will be slipstream nonetheless, um, which is always very handy. I was just watching Les on that lap, a 58.8. He's in the, a world of his own, wanting to make that championship his. And with a 35-point gap as it stands, although let's be honest, four fish it's definitely 38 now. 38 now. 38 now with four fish in the third place. He might not even need to worry about the <laughs> the double points race if things play out the way he wants it to. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what does he need? 22 there. I, if he, it's not going to happen this race because he needs 68 point gap, which is just not going to happen. You can't score that many points in a single race. But Bruce, no. um, just clearing his penalty, clearing his penalty, and not losing that place to Fourfish. Teak Filo very wide out of her end. So the gap now uh, back to 35. Classic Dave having a good run on Philo as he comes to world personal best lap so far. Will he look to the inside? No, he gives Philo a nice little nudge. Oh, I think so, Traumatic Dave is working on the lines of work with Philo for the next couple of minutes, but a couple of minutes maximum to see if they can get on the back of Rally Matt. Well, Bruce Lee's just turned into a lawnmower. Lovely move from Philo just to gamble on where Bruce was going to go. I don't know if you've replayed it, Jordan, but I've I got a marker Lee set. Caught the curb at turn one. Let's go back and have a look. That's very... I wonder... He didn't catch the curb. I wonder... I wonder if his television had a bit of a fit. Because we know these silly TVs have come up with the, the uh, warning message of... Make sure you press a button. I wonder if that's come up for him. Uh, it's, it's cost him in his fight for the podium because he's lost... 
third place. He's down in fifth. He's got Traumatic Dave who gives him a little nudge. Four minutes shy of four minutes now to go. Orfish has a nice comfortable gap, you'd say, to rally Matt, providing he doesn't pick up any more penalties. It's not difficult to f this circuit, I would say, in terms of challenge for the drivers, but as we've seen so far, the pack are having a nice little battle for the podium places at the minute. Dominator Freeze finally got past Jerry Dunlop. Yeah, I just showed, just showed that on the screen. He was ahead. Um, and as far as the battle, I mean, the, this trio you can see on your screen now for the battle for third on the race is your battle for third in the championship as well. Um, Rally Matt, obviously, they're in reverse order at the moment because Matt is currently in fifth, Philo fourth, Bruce in third in the championship standings. Mm, absolutely, here comes Philo then towards turn one. He's got 1.6 to try and clear. It's not going to be easy with 2.50 to go, which is a I would say about three laps. Three laps worth, yeah. You can clear his penalties, but it's going to be really tough not to lose places. Traumatic Dave. Ooh, here comes Bruce. Fino gets the move done. Bruce down the inside now. So, Matt, that's how easy it is. He goes from third to fifth in the space of, what, two corners? Not even that. It was very, very simple. Bruce Lee primed for that third position just to you know, consolidate that championship position a third. He's just done a personal best of the 59-1, so Bruce Lee back in business, back in the big yeah. time in terms of the podiums. Philo's clearing penalties slowly, but not, not at the rate he needs. He's going to have to try and play something similar to how he did it at turn two before. Yeah, at the moment, the battle for third in the championship life scores are as follows. Bruce would now have 20, 229 with Philo 223, so only six points there. Uh, Matt would be on 214, so a further nine. Um, so it's going to make it a little bit more difficult. But Bruce down the inside after a poor exit from Philo. And Bruce gets back up into third place. Yeah, Philo, a bit of tactics going on there. He's just cleared half a second worth of penalties. I think he saw the move coming and just thought that's a good opportunity to slot back in, which he did. Dave's just been distanced now. He's too far away, but he's primed for that reverse grid spot. Obviously, and Philo, the second row. Sorry, Jack. Philo immediately looking back down the inside of Rind. And he does clear a touch more, not a lot more. Just about hangs onto the curb, so he should get away with that one. But whether that little cut there was a bit too much, we, we shall see. But back up into the podium for Philo. And here comes Bruce back onto the inside for, for Lauda. What does Rally Matt do here, Jordan? Does he play it to the last minute or does he go it, for it going into turn two? Oh, Philo runs wide. I think Bruce well, is, is Bruce has given the position up. There's the answer to my question. The free wide into turn two. Philo breaks later. Has to try and clear that penalty. He gets it down to four temps, but Bruce Lee's still on the inside. He's going to be the outside for turn number three. It's going to be very, very difficult to try and get around the outside there. Philo gives him the room. Matt will give the slipstream to Philo. We don't need to cut to Les because he's going to get another lap in, so well done to him. But this is the battle, Jord, as they come toward the penultimate corner. Yeah, Rally Matt has walked, walked away with this one. He's managed to play this an absolute blinder. Let's continue. So I'll quickly switch over to Four Fish because he will finish second place in this race. So a nice quiet rise up through the ranks, but not enough, in my opinion, so far. Rally Matt finishes third. It will be Bruce in fourth, Philo fifth after taking his penalties. Traumatic Dave is sixth. Dominator will come home seventh. A good race by Dominator there. Uh, uh, Joey Dunlop eighth. <laughs> Joey Joey Dunlop eighth and Jazzy just okay he's he's off the pack but this is good seat time for him. This is a great is. great great chance for seat time. And ideally in, the, in this game that's all that's all you need you just need a bit of seat time to get used to everything. He does and a, and a personal best of one minute point what one minute one point four which isn't too far away from Les who has driven absolutely superbly. He's, Run over the curb at the final corner, not that it matters to him, because no one's on the same lap. It's going to be Next Gen Les, who takes the victory here at the Red Bull Ring for race one. What a drive. Fantastic effort. Just inputting the points from that race. 
Now, see, interestingly, Philo doesn't lose any ground to Bruce on that one because he had the fastest, he had the pole position point. Absolutely. But at the moment, Bruce in the driving seat, but only nine points ahead of Philo with Rally Matt only three behind that. So now 12 points covers third to fifth and 35 between Les and Fourfish. And uh, I will work out the permutation for Les in a moment. Indeed, you will. I'll start to do that. I'm just going to change the setting so that we've got obviously reverse grid based on previous race results no more issues now that everything's working properly should be fine on there so i'll just change that drivers know that the next race will start at nine o'clock give them a little break they only have three races tonight for the drivers and bruce has said his tv did turn off and he's apologised to Darren and Dave, Darren being Philo, of course. Um, but there was no problem there. In fact, Philo took a really good, good possibility out of it, to be fair to him. So I was just in putting the final points into the table. So the nine finishes. Yeah, absolutely. So whilst Jordan just sorts out those results, it's going to be interesting to see how the drivers will tackle, obviously, a reverse grid for race two. They've got two minutes until the race starts, so it'll be good to see how they get on. And then we'll go into our 30-minute race around Brands Hatch. Is that the GP circuit, Jordan, or the Indy? It will be the GP because we done the Indy earlier this season. Earlier in the season, he did indeed. So, tyre wear is going to be very critical around that circuit. And the advantage of surprising the drivers for round 9 and 10 is that they won't have done as much practice as they would have wanted to. So, I think that could throw up a few interesting results and inconsistencies. I believe it would be a really good race to watch. So... Let's see how that goes. I've just seen the drivers are entering already. Just waiting on Joey Dunlop 3. So, permutations. For Les to win the title in this, the penultimate race of the season. Uh, so, what Les needs to do, he can... If he, if he finishes, just... Uh, if he finishes fifth or higher, he will guarantee himself his championship. Alternatively, he can finish sixth with the fastest lap, and that will also gain him the championship. So that's the permutations that Les needs to work on. He doesn't have to win the race, he just has to finish in that top five. Uh, without any bone, without the fastest lap, and he will take the title. Don't forget, of course, double points race, so it'll be interesting to see how everyone gets on. Jordan's cut to the track, so it is time for the race start. I'm just going to check that the event settings are correct. And then find out they're horribly wrong afterwards. Yeah, no, it's fine, sure. <laughs> um, all good. Nothing's gone wrong there. Race starts. I said nine to the drivers, everyone's entered in, so it shouldn't be a problem. Joey getting a bit more practice in as he goes through turn one. Lovely line for Joey, has to say. But here we go then, into race two of round nine here at the Red Bull Ring. And this is going to be a fascinating prospect to see how the nine get on. So, on the right hand side, you've got Jazzy just 75 in that Red Bull livery, Joey Dunlop on the left in that blue livery, those two. And Dominator 3 going to be very tricky to overtake. There's 15 minutes on the right-hand side for the minis. Here come the numbers. And the race is live here from the Red Bull Ring in round two. And it looks like a relatively good start for Jazzy Just. He's got himself clear already of Joey Dunlop. 
Third place has dominated three as they come towards turn one. He's got a challenge on the inside of Traumatic Dave, but the front two filter through fine. Traumatic Dave up to third. Lovely stuff for him. Philo battering his way through Dominator, who hasn't had the best of starts as they come towards turn two. Jordan Dunlop's on the inside. Three wide into Rind and through turn two, and it looks like Jazzy uh, Joey Dunlop has got through into the lead of this race with Jazzy just just behind. Traumatic Dave looking to go on the outside didn't quite work as he had through th turn three and down towards Rind, but ja Jazzy just isn't finished here. This is a good little recovery as he looks down yeah. the inside of the penultimate corner. Is he's going to try and hang it on the inside? He leans on Joey, which is rightfully so. Philo gives him a little nudge towards turn number seven, but Joey goes round the outside. That momentum helps him. Dave gets forced off the circuit, and it's absolutely chaos as Bruce Lee looks to take advantage on the inside. Yeah, they have to, they have to be careful when you're on the outside of that final corner. Just not. You got to make sure. Even a lot of times, people think, "Oh, you have to give out room on the outside." It's not just that; you have to give room on the inside as well. So you can't just squeeze someone off into a penalty. But looks like Jesse just has kind of been a cork in the bottle through turn one, and has allowed he, Joey Dunlop just to escape. Yeah, he's got a nice little one point, well, one second gap, but he's picked up a penalty. So Jazzy might be able to help him with that, just in terms of clearing it. Bruce Lee, meanwhile, silent but surely, has got himself up to third. Oh, he nice switched it. Of Rally Matt as well, so he can block Rally Matt's escape route off. Unless Rally Matt wants to try and go on the grass. Jazzy just is actually helping none of them at the moment because he's bang center of them. But Bruce, oh, and th they all, oh, three they go all wide. Take an alternative line. Lovely avoidance from Fourfish. He's going to take two places for the price of one at turn <laughs> seven. Good Great move from Fourfish. Good move from Fourfish. Good awareness from Bruce as well, nipping it down the inside of. Jazzy just in the final corner, who's had a bit of a tr bad, uh, bad couple of corners there. But uh, Fourfish doing uh, what he can. If he can get past Bruce, get past Joey Dunlop, and run away, that's all he can do right now in terms of strategy because Les is in that coveted fifth position. He is at the moment. Jordan, what and is he's the fourth. Yeah. He's just fighting off Rally Mass, isn't he? I think. Yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. He is so what as it stands, Jordan, in terms of the points, is four fish now looking to go around the outside. Forget about that, Jordan. We'll skip on that point of view until we get around this next half. Four fish, will he go around the outside of Bruce? Brave to try it, but doesn't quite get He's got to be careful because of Philo behind him. And this is the loud layers to get right on the back end of this little train. I have to say as well, Jerry Dunlop. <laughs> leads of the third lap once again. He's done it two weeks in a row now in the reverse grid race, but here comes four fishes on the inside. This is much more like it for the champion fighter. He's up the inside. He's managed to get Bruce a little bit wider, but Bruce keeps up that momentum. Bruce has got a 1.2 second penalty to deal with, though, and Les says hello. <laughs> Feel I went backwards there. This Bruce Lee slots himself back into the gap. So, four fish up to second place now. That is what he needed for this race. Les is going with him. He's trying to get past Bruce Lee now to come towards Brink Corner for the fourth time. Still on the inside is Les, but thinks better of it. Les with no penalty currently. Look at Rally Matt sniffing around trying to find another opportunity. I've also just worked out that Les actually needs 11 points more than four fish, so he does need to finish out of him. I was going to say. <laughs> if, it been, if, it, if it hadn't been for the double points, I think that's what's caught us out there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I also work out. I'm also used to working out drop scores as well, which is Absolutely. somewhat confusing. But, um, yeah, never, so never, not not to worry though. <laughs> sorry, we, we we know he needs 11 more points, so if. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll rework out the permutation if Les was to win. All right, so Joey Dun Dunlop in the meantime, he's got himself into the 59s, but I'll tell you what else he's been joined by. Mr. Fourfish is on the outside now as they come towards turn number one. Bruce Lee also defending on the inside, of, and Joey's back off for his penalty, and Fourfish just sweeps through. The two minis in front of Les now re 
calibrate themselves and Les can't take advantage Joey Dunlop on the inside but he's not quick enough and here comes Rally Matt tries to make it free wide here comes Philo Joey Dunlop gets swamped he's gone from first to sixth in the space of one lap now it's three wide as they come towards turn one make that two wide because Rally Matt's cleared both Philo and Les to turn one Philo goes through gets fourth place and Les after looking for a potential second place is now down to fifth Philo still looking for a move on Rally Matt he's trying to go around the outside a little bit clumsy from Les first mistake we've seen is still a bit of a battle between the two he's on the grass there's a little bit of contact they're both leaning on one another Joey Dunlop looking at this at the moment he's all over the rear spoiler very small spoiler on that Mini Cooper S of next gen Les he comes towards them they are practically a train they are that close to one another as they come into ring corner fantastic racing meanwhile I've hit the replay mark because I've only just noticed that Fourfish has got past Bruce Lee Harding for the uh, oh he's in the lead anyway isn't he because of Joey Dunlop I, that's me trying to catch up but yeah it's it's going mental I've, what I've worked out actually is that Fourfish needs to be fifth or higher to keep the championship alive and he's permanent well he's firmly doing now at the moment he's in first place with just over half the race to go Joey Dunlop showing well again around this Red Bull circuit and Dramatic Dave is catching up to this group because of so much squabbling he's going to need a little bit help, more help though from this fighting quad well quad quadrio it's not a word quadruple that's the word looking for oh Philo what was that like bit too defensive from Philo through there looking to try and cover the line sure in fact giving himself a penalty, penalty yeah, yeah. But to be fair, it's a bit of a harsh penalty because you don't really gain anything out there. In fact, you just lose time on the wheel spin. So it's a very harsh very penalty. True. Very true. But you cannot turn into a lawnmower. But Les sees his opportunity. Philo ran wide. Les straight through. Nice and clean that up the inside. Bruce Lee Harding has the fastest lap yeah. as well. So he, none of the championship contenders have got that extra point on hand. Bruce Lee's looking looking with intent on the back of four fish with half the race now to go those two have got about a second and a half to rally Matt and they ideally need to work together don't you Jordan work together until about the last three minutes I'd say get that gap up and Bruce actually fa going even faster through sector one on this current lap so this this could play quite critical in, in the championship because that extra bonus point although it's it's quite hard this is for four fish to, to get this championship in my opinion it's, it's a very outside chance but it's, it's it's a chance nonetheless yeah anything can happen in, in the in the 10th race or rather the 10th round of the, the 18th race of the season i should say technically speaking you know if les were to disconnect which we absolutely hope doesn't happen of course but it, never mind that fault bruce lee looks towards the inside these two have got two seconds on rally matt and sure enough four fish that's in go yeah, Bruce actually yes. setting the fastest lap of that of the race on the last lap, 59.012. But he's defending from Fourfish, so he's definitely not considering helping Fourfish in his fight for the title. Well, I think there's a big personal scrap going on between Philo and Les here. Look at that, Jordan. They're not happy. They bashed one another a couple of times during this race. They're not pleased. I wonder if Fido's being a little bit annoyed from the last race because there was definitely a tap made. Definitely and elbows out from the two of them. The longer they stay together, Jordan, the more we're going to see a bit of chaos. And, and Joey Dunlop does... is on their tail. Right. He's right with them. So this could be a really good opportunity for Joey Dunlop to break it back into that top five. Yeah, and Joey Dunlop, the definite joker in the pack, is four fish. On the inside, yeah. Bruce. Bruce Bleed not going to fight that. No, but they've lost a second to Rally Matt, and it's not what they want. There's five and a half minutes to go now in this session. Les and Philo, too busy getting to know one another at the minute to try and catch up, but it can all change very quickly. It can, and at the moment, live, live points say that Fourfish is only 27 away from Les, as it stands so that is well and truly in the fight and currently Bruce would extend his gap to Philo up to 16 points and Philo and Rally Matt right now are tied 
as mm. it stands. Les, though, in a world of pain, having to fend off Philo, he's losing a lot of time. He is having to lose a lot of time, and I'm just thinking about if the championship stays at it is, Wolfish has a decent opportunity going into Brands Hatch. <laughs> Les purposely slowing down more than he needs to. It's not, it's not a bad tactic to have, I just know it's going to frustrate Philo. And Traumatic Dave has found himself within a second now with this group. Yeah, and Rally Matt at the front is now within half a second of the leading pair. And these three now have a, a chance to fight to duke and fight it out because Les is too preoccupied with Philo at the moment. They're both having a bit of... The phrase that I want to use is one that I can't use, but they're having a good duke out between the two of them. And I think now the gap at three seconds with four minutes to go, this is this is party hour for the front three. Here, and here goes Bruce. Slot himself back in. Meanwhile, the fight for fourth is still well and truly on. Philo has dropped a little bit of space behind Les, but it's only half a second. Nothing that a bit of slipstream won't fix. No, absolutely not. Equally, Joey Dunlop just keeping within a second of those fourth and fifth place drivers. As the, the lap times have been very erratic if you look at the lap times on the side of the screen, folks. Because these are very eclectic mixture of 59s and one minute lap times from the two of them. And Joey Dunlop's best lap is a 59.6, which sort of shows you the difference in consistency between the drivers. Back at the front, Bruce still shadowing four fish with just three minutes to go. So I'd say probably another three laps, I'd say possibly four. I'd say three, I think, because Les does a 58-9. Race that... one, Les has returned to the, to the party. 58-9, that is going to not massively change the the way the standings look, but gives him that extra point. That's up to 28 the gap. That's a point in his pocket as opposed to four fishes, which is what he'll be concentrating on. Philo's rejoined him. So maybe Les... Ooh, Les did not get the best of runs, and Philo might just clear... He does indeed clear Les. I thought Les wasn't going to open up the steer just to give him a little bit more room. Fino back up to fourth then. So again, that rechanges the, the table as it as it stands. Puts it back to twenty-seven points, and this this is where the bonus point comes because. If you think about it, the bo that bonus point, the fastest lap is Les goes back down the inside, bit of door open from the pair of them, bit of pushing. It's definitely getting physical here between these two, and Les is not yeah. a happy bunny. No, he's not. But he needs to remember that he can't do anything stupid. He doesn't want to get a, a post-race penalty or anything stupid like They're that. that still practically damage. rubbing. Les tries to cut back in over, for, over Philo, doesn't quite happen. Still side by side out of Worth. Les has to think smart here. This is this is his championship on the line, and if he ends up going off, that's a massive, massive favour to Fourfish. It is indeed. As the, I'm just watching the front trio. Jordan, you keep an eye out on Les and Philo because I'm looking for the lap times they come towards the line, and this is going to be the final lap, just about. So Bruce, if he wants to go for this race win, has to make his move now. And Les, if he wants to keep his championship lead a little bit healthier, needs to keep it out the wall and away from fourth Philo's front bumper. Could be easier said than done because Philo is still chomping on the bumper of uh, of Les here as the end to Worth. Uh, I think that's Bruce just down to third place, Jack. He just has to slow down, clears a penalty, alleviates the pressure on four fish. As they come through, turn number three for what will be the final time. Les and Fourfish. Bit more Bumble. door banging out of Worth. But Philo could get the run here. We're going to have to switch back to the front in a minute, though, because of the winners coming through. Philo, they're still rubbing doors, still rubbing doors. 
Philo goes off really wide. Les keeps within bounds. They're still door banging. Les is just going to clear it, but it's full fish. He wins from Randy Matt from Bruce Lee Harding. Next gen, Les. They're both trying to clear penalties. Les comes home in fourth. Traumatic Dave nicks fifth place in the end from Philo sixth. Joey Dunlop seventh. Dominator. It should keep it on the tarmac for eighth. With Jazzy just ninth. That was chaotic. Well done to full fish though. Big win for him. He needed that one. And, and fair play to Rally Matt and Bruce Lee for securing the podium. That was that was captivating that fight between Les and Philo and it was quite literally a fight between the two and this is this is the thing Jordan they both had pounces they both had to slow down and had they have pushed each other any further Jurassic David had got fourth he's very lucky is Les here in the end of the day and everyone had a penalty apart from full fish during that race <laughs> which just shows you how good a racer for fish is yeah, absolutely. Uh, but more that's done, it could have that's cost Philo a fair few points in terms of his fight for third. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to save the replay. Quickly have a look. Oh, Les has left the room. I think you might need to remind him, Jack, that there's another race to go. Yeah, I'm going to. So, as it stands, the points going into the final round then, Jack, obviously, I, I guess you'd have to say everything's provisional, because, uh, obviously there's a few, been, few little bumps and scrapes during those two races. Uh, Les will have 345 points to Four Fishes 317, the gap 28 points heading into the final round. Bruce Lee Harding has 244, with Philo 230, uh, Randy Matt 235, Philo 231, so just nine points separating though uh sorry 13 points separating those guys there so that's gonna be quite tight in that's all in terms of the battles really because traumatic dave has overtaken d white house with d white house obviously missing the last couple of rounds and joey dunlop is in eighth with 100, uh, 148 but um i think we'll uh, we'll end this this stream here we'll stop a new one for round number 10 jack yeah. Um, brand new stream in about say two minutes time once we get it all set up and ready to go but do join us in about two, two three minutes for the finale of the Coates vs Newsham Mini Cooper Cup and we are live from Brands Hatch GP